Hi there, I'm Brian. In this video, I will take you to the challenging world of robotics research. During my PhD at the Vrije Universiteit Brussel, I have contributed to different robotics problems. I started researching energy-efficient activation strategies for powered anchor prosthetics. I am proud that with my research prototype, I have contributed to launching my lab's first spin-off company, and as such improved the lives of MPDs. But controlling just one robot wasn't enough for me. So I started a new research line in my lab to find out how to control multiple robots safely. And I applied this to aerial robots, like this drone. You can read my PhD research in this interesting book. And now I will explain why my PhD thesis is outstanding. Each time we hop on a plane, we put our lives in the hands of other people. The plane's flight route is programmed before takeoff, and the pilots must ensure we arrive at our destination safely. But pilots can't ensure safety on their own. They must speak with the air traffic controllers with a centralized tour of view. They monitor and decide when it's safe to land or take off as to prevent collisions. So on the autonomy axis, passenger flight is still far to the left. Teleoperating a drone to avoid an obstacle is quite easy for humans. Today's consumer drones also come with some autonomous obstacle avoidance software. Let's now find out how safe this is. By flying the drone straight towards a tree, we can see that it autonomously avoids the tree, at least in this low speed mode. However, in the high speed mode, the drone collides and crashes into pieces. So today's consumer drones are only slightly better than airplanes in autonomously ensuring safety. We can create drone light shows with a thousand drones. However, they follow pre-programmed trajectories at low speeds and large inter-vehicle distances. Artists, engineers and their computers spend a lot of time designing these visually appealing trajectories that must be safe. Flocks of birds are beautiful examples of natural aerial swarms. Each bird flies at high speeds and in densely packed formations and decides fully autonomously and in a decentralized way how to prevent collisions. This exposes the large safe autonomy gap. My PhD made steps to overcome this gap to enable aerial swarms that deliver packages and life-saving medical supplies in minutes, that monitor, spray and harvest crops, that construct high-rise buildings, and that perform search and rescue missions after disasters. The quadrotor has six degrees of freedom, but it only has four motors, so it's underactivated. It needs to adjust its attitude in order to translate. Moreover, each motor can only produce a limited force in this direction. And just as your little chopping cart, this drone has a non-zero mass and therefore it cannot break instantaneously. When we write out the Newton order equations of motion and combine them, we end up with a system of fourth order ODEs. Solving this is non-trivial, especially because the rotation matrices contain many sines and cosines, which makes the dynamics highly nonlinear. The model of two quadrotors with cable suspended load is even more complex. This system exhibits a very high state dimension and coupled nonlinear kinodynamics with difficult to stabilize load swing and torsion modes. Even if I have the model, it's challenging to find the controls that move the drone from point to point. How to do this safely? In other words, how to prevent the output dynamics from exceeding constraints? And how to do this in real time? which means computing safe actions each 10 milliseconds. And that's where the experience reference governor comes into play. It allows for a nonlinear system that is pre-stabilized by a primary controller to account for all its state and input constraints by adapting the velocity of the applied reference signal. The reference is attracted towards the goal and repelled from the obstacles. And its velocity is scaled with the dynamic safety margin the shortest distance to constraint violation by using predictions or invariant sets. My control has an explicit solution as it does not use iterative numerical optimization which is very computationally expensive. However, I have shown it does not replace optimization-based control. It improves its feasibility and computational tractability. My control is not just empirically safe, but certified safe. After stating some pretty mild assumptions and some equations, block diagrams, algorithms, and theorems later, I was always able to mathematically prove safety and convergence of my algorithms. 
After writing down all the theory, I programmed the algorithms, then I simulate this on my drones. In simulation, I could test new IDs and crash drones without doing the tedious repairs. Simulations allow to visualize my algorithms. Three drones are flying on a circle and one drone safely flies through or around the circle. The pink lines denote the long horizon predictions of drone dynamics. The orange tube encapsulates this prediction and is communicated easily between the drones. The closer two tubes, the smaller the predicted collision distance and hence the reference velocity is also reduced to ensure safety. I have extensively benchmarked controllers, such as my invariant set and predictive controllers for swarming with 30 drones. I quantified some fundamental trade-offs in terms of scalability, computational time and performance. I also tested my methods in a virtual world with obstacles. Although the drones, their cables and the load they transport may come close to the obstacles, my control ensures collision-free motion. It's time to show this also works on real drones. I did my first experiments in a flight lab with motion capture cameras. We placed reflective markers on the drones and the obstacles so that we can track their pose in real time. As our system was too small, I've spent six months at the University of Colorado Boulder to use theirs. And this is the research result. I made a swarm of nine hand palm sized quadrotors from the initials U, C and B in a certified safe and asymptotically stable way. Although the drones can come very close, they never collide. The controller is fully distributed and runs easily at the rate of 500 Hz on the very limited processors of these 35 gram robots. It keeps the radio communication bandwidth low and does not rely on any offline trajectory pre-computations. I had the pleasure to work with an outstanding team of students who helped me building all the hardware and software of these drones. With a payload ranging from a few hundred grams to almost two kilograms. And they instrumented with a bunch of sensors to measure their pose, velocity and that of the cable suspended load. In these field experiments, I request two drones to fly towards each other. On the left, they swap positions on one line and on the right, they cross on perpendicular lines. My control allows the drones to avoid collisions and actuate their saturations at all time. It's very computationally efficient, as it computes the trajectory predictions over a 3 second long horizon composed of 300 points, while it runs on a small computer on board the drones at a rate of 100 Hz, with a compute time of merely 1 millisecond. I also made two quadrotors cooperatively transport a 2 kg bar shaped load. The system is safe as it prevents actuator saturations, ensures the cable is always stored and the load measurable, prevents excessive cable oscillations and prevents self-collisions between any part of the kinematic chain, drones, cables, load, when requesting a steady state inadmissible vertical load configuration. I find it very important that my PGG research is easily reproducible. My software contains over 30,000 lines of efficient C++ code that is open sourced. It's unique as the same code works in simulation and on hardware. Moreover, I have developed a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build and set up all the required infrastructure. During our PGs, Brian and I have collaborated a lot. He helped me with extending the safe control method for its use in dynamic human-robot collaboration tasks. Here we show that a combination of a rapidly exploring random tree motion planner with the explicit reference governor makes the robot quickly reach target references while avoiding collisions in dynamic obstacle cluttered environments. Thanks to my postdoctoral fellowship from the Belgian American Educational Foundation, I can continue to explore this fascinating research line at the University of Michigan. I'm working here at the Ford Robotics Building, where I'm researching not only how to make a robot safe, but also resilient to the unexpected, like non-cooperative or malicious robots. <laughs>